Check check. Check check. Check 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 check. Okay, let's just jump right into it. Oh. Since I streamed last, made some progress on the inventory screen. Let's go show that off first, right? So, the inventory screen now takes into account whatever it is that you have um, available to you, right? So right now I've got it set up so that, you know, my player... Oh, wait, it doesn't. It sets, it looks at these inventory icons and determines which ones are correctly set, right? So the other ones didn't have actual inventory, so they're not showing. If I click on one of them, it shows this screen. And if I set this as primary, then all the ones that are marked sword will be um, highlighted in blue. And close this. If I click this and go set secondary, it now works. Um, so that's all valid, right? Um, what isn't though seeing this and realizing that there's a bunch of blank space there um what is valid obviously is that there's two um if i click on this one again as i said as primary it screws up cool because it's both now so there's still some bugs in here like i need to set it so that you can't click this button on the one that's already there um but those aren't really that super important right now right it's doing what I wanted, which is indicating what's marked as your primary and secondary. It's persist across uh, different uh, loadings of it, things like that. So it's doing what I'm intending. Now, the other thing that I started on, um, let's come down here so this guy stops following us, hopefully. And I'm going to go out of full screen. And I'm going to go split screen like I had it when you first started streaming here. And let's find our character. Come on. Don't do it, camera. There we go. And come out of this mode. So now when I swing, you see there's that little red line that pops up. I started doing a ray cast when... Or not a ray cast. I started doing a debug draw on the ray cast um, in the direction that you're attacking. And if I've done it correctly, you can see that it's not set up optimally for attacking the enemy, right? It, it's very short. It just goes barely past the player. Um, in this case, it's probably right. It goes down a whole block. Um, in the case of up, it's about right. Um, the other piece is right now this line is not adjusting for where the ray should start from. So I just remembered that piece. I, I had taken that off. So it's probably starting here and going out that little bit. So it's probably close to being right. Um, but I'm doing this uh, in an effort to try and figure out what is the optimal box size. And for some reason, when I started doing this earlier in the morning, when I was going on like four hours sleep, um, I couldn't figure out the math for it. So I, I stuck with the line for now. <laughs> um, I'll get there. Um, it's just I was too tired, I think. I don't know. I, I couldn't get there. But we'll get there eventually. Um, let's take a quick peek at the Trello, though. Um, rooms with locked doors on entry. Something we could work on, right? Enemy drops is half-baked. Currency, it's got a coin. That's about it. Uh, puzzle type story, lighting effects. So I think limiting the pushable is probably our best bet. So what I kind of want to do with that is I want to make it so that you can push it in one direction only and one block only, if that makes sense. Um, for ones that we set that option on, right? So I guess we got to find a pushable somewhere. Let's uh, grab another project window like I always do. Pull off my other screen here and go down to scenes. Go to the dev scene that is the scene here that we can throw things into let's get rid of our multi-action receiver out of this scene because it's just not needed right now and go to prefabs pushable and we've got a one pushable block right now so let's open this one up um actually let's grab that one put it in the scene that's what i wanted to do uh, that's the game view okay we're resetting our transform we're good um 
what I'm thinking is we will I guess the script's not on this piece. It must be on the one underneath. Oh, right. There's no script for this. It's just using the rigid body physics built to native Unity. So there's really nothing to it right this moment. Hmm. Oh, so that means... We need to build it from scratch, okay. Uh, pushable. Pushable block limiter. We'll just pushable block limit. Wait and add. Hi, Zigi. Okay, come on. Visual Studio. So I'm going to, in start, I guess, get a reference or the starting location of the blocks, really what I'm going for. That way we can see how far we've moved and which direction we've moved so that we can limit that movement. Um, yeah, that, that should work just fine. So we'll do uh, private, and I'm going to make it serializable just so I can see it. Not that I want to set it, really. Private transform. No, let's do vector two. Vector. Come on. Vector two. And we'll call it start location. And we'll set start location equal to uh, transform dot position. Cool. And then in update. If I'm gonna do this vector two current location equals transform dot position. So our current position, right? And then we'll say if start location is not equal current location. Then we're going to oh, Jimmy programming languages in my head. There we go. Um, if it does not equal current location, then we're going to figure out which direction we're moving in. Yeah, so we'll figure out which direction we're moving in. We'll do that by getting the delta for the x and the delta for the y and figuring out which ones has a bigger absolute value. And from that, we will set the rigid body's uh, constraint on the opposite axis so that you can only push it in one axis. And then we will do a distance calculation to determine... Uh, so say it's the x-axis we're moving along. We'll check that x-axis to see if we've moved more than one unit. If we have, then we will limit it in both. We will freeze the position in both. And that should take care of it for us. So uh, start location. Uh, let's see. So we'll get uh, float dx, so our delta x, minus current location. And our float dy equals start location minus current location and I'm typing this wrong this needs to be x dot x dot y dot y private um bool no nope. yeah bool should uh, should limit movement equals false. So I'm doing this because I realize that some of them I will want to move were all over the place, but not all of them. So this will give me that flexibility. So we'll say should it limit the false uh, the movement? If should limit movement is true, then we'll do all this. Okay. 
we're going to need a reference to the rigid body. A private uh, rigid body 2D. I'll call RB. We'll set it down here. So RB equals get component rigid body 2D. And we will say required component type of rigid body 2D. So it forces it to always have rigid body 2D on anything that uses this script. Check, 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 check. My mic working. Check, check, check. Cool. Um, need to get that semicolon there. And then we'll say if math f dot absolute on dx is greater than math f dot absolute <laughs> hey andrew how's it going man dy cool i'm surprised my thing recognized that you mentioned my name because it did the different sound effect like you didn't at me or just said my name spelled it normally did you hear the the like the coin sound? That's you messaging me. But when you said my name, it did the little arrow strike sound. So if the DX is greater, so we're moving in the X direction the most. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Huh. Yeah, if you do at tech stack, it'll make a different sound. Maybe I got the sounds down too much from the this or in uh, the stream. Can you even hear my background music? <laughs> I play music all these streams for nothing. Uh, let's see. So we're moving in the X direction. So we need to do RB dot constraints. Very faint. Okay. See, it's hard to tell because I've got a, a volume control on my headset too. Right, I'll turn the desktop sounds up a bit. Let me know how that is. Constraints. There we go. Dot. Cool. You can't set the constraints. Is it in its own class? It is. Rigid body constraints 2D. Controls which degrees of freedom are allowed for the simulation of the rigid body. You can only get and set it. So if we can only get and set it, how do we work with it? Very constraint components. Right, I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is set the constraint on the axis that we're not moving along. So once you start moving it in the X direction, it has to keep moving in the X direction and only the X direction. So I want to set it at runtime. Rigid body dot constraint. I thought it was something like that. Oh, would you buy 2D dot constraints? Ah, uh, come on. We just seen what you were. Rigid body constraints 2D. That's all one word. Okay. RBC equals that. And then we'll do RBC dot. How do you edit any of the properties of it at runtime? Was new rigid body constraint 2D. Can we do that? There's no parameters to this thing. It's an enum. Oh, why did I not see that before? Equal rigid body constraints 2D dot. But the enum doesn't have enough values. Like I want to re constrain rotation and constrain position in one of these two. Hey, Andrew, I'm here to save you. So here's how it works with with uh, with uh, what's it called? 
enums. So what you want to do is, so what, like at this point in your code, what, what do you want the, the Booleans to be set? So I want to keep the freeze rotation, but I also want to freeze the rotation in the Y axis. Okay. So here's my little trick that I learned from past experience in programming. Uh, if you notice, when you mouse over all those different enums, you see they have numbers associated with them, right? Mm -hmm. So you just add and, them together? Well, no, no, no. You use, because all of the numbers, if you notice, they're powers of two. Because each one is using each bit in the actual memory. So what you do gotcha. is, is you use the the bitwise or operator to combine them together. That's one, two, four, gotcha. That makes complete sense. So then this would be the combination of all of them. Yeah, so which if is you freeze want position like and rotation. freeze rotation, so you do freeze rotation, then you do the uh, bitwise or operator, and then freeze X. Thank you. You saved me probably 20 minutes of fiddling around. <laughs> I got some magic tricks off my sleeve. No, that makes complete sense. So yeah, uh, that's cool. So then we need to do the same thing uh, down here, but in the X direction. And I need to say if Y is moving more. Yep. There, and Push then yeah, so what... Oh, I see what you're doing, I see what you're doing. So like if you ever played the old school Legend of Zelda games, you could yep. push these uh, squares, but you could only push them in one direction. Once you started moving it like in the X direction, you couldn't move it in the Y at all. Mm -hmm. um, and they would only move a total of one block. So I'm going to make mine mimic that behavior, but I'll, I'm setting it up as a bool on the script so yeah. that I can set it to false, and then I can move it as far as I want in any direction I want. Yeah. So... You know, okay. There's a lot of situations where, like, if there's, that's a rare thing to occur upon in like programming APIs and stuff. But I had that once before. I think in um, the reason why I know this is because in in C plus plus, if you are like printing to the, I believe if you're, if you're printing to the console and you want to change the color of the text, uh, you know, there's like a there's a limited color palette, but you can set the background color of a certain character and you can set the foreground color and so the way that you do that is that um there's like um these kind of not really enums but they're like um kind of like enums where it's like red is a certain like kind of identifier and then there's like red foreground and then there could be red background and so what you have to do i figured this out from like fiddling with this but basically <clears throat> um, each each value is basically, if you imagine in binary, they're all zeros except one of the bits is one for each different option. And so yep. by using the bitwise or operator, you can combine them together. Yeah, it's similar if you go to like low level graphics APIs and stuff where yeah. you're setting the red, green and blue values, you're basically bit shifting things around to get them in to fit into 256 bits, even though you're working with three different integers and things like that. Yeah. O OpenGL does it a lot too, where you're you're doing that. I, I just didn't think Unity went to that level. It seems, well, it's, it, it's cool that it did, right? I mean, it's more efficient that way. They can store it in one, one setting instead of having a series of properties for each one of these mm -hmm. um, and then just decode it. Yeah. So vector two is what I need. So I'm gonna need to s basically freeze the other position and move it back because it's gonna, Rigid bodies can move just slightly in one position while the other one might be moving a lot. And I want to make sure that that doesn't happen with this. Um, so transform to position, but why we can't do. So we need to say new vector two. Did you figure out your, your uh, yes flashy bug thing? <laughs> we'll call it that. Oh, where that you were, you were, yeah, because you were, uh... Um, yeah, you saw last night, I was like, the chunks were doing this weird thing where they were like, only one chunk would load and they were all like, going crazy, I think you saw that, right? Yeah, I watched the stream from last night, today. I, I watched fixed it today. that. I have yeah. to like... <clears throat> was it they were all just stacked on the sand on top of each other? Not, kind of, no. They were like, overriding each other. There was something going on. Okay. My problem is that, like, um, 
Well, I have, not, I have many problems. <laughs> um, the problem was it was like, I have one class for the, um, for the chunk. No, 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 not chunk. The blocks. I mean, yeah, chunks as well. But like the blocks have, uh, no, 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 not the block, the chunks. I'm sorry. So there's a chunk object class, but then there's also just a regular chunk class that holds data. It's like when I do level gen, there's a level object and it has a 2D array of all of the chunk things. And when it generates, it basically puts it in that structure. But then when I need to load it, what I do is I say, okay, uh, this chunk entity object thing loads in all of its data from this. I feel like there's an easier way to do this, but I convoluted it. But I'm loading in all like the data that's held in this other class into this entity type looking class thing. And it's like, uh, it got me confused because I also have to do these things where I have to like, like if you want to get the, the value, the, the block ID for a certain block with a, a world position, you have to convert it to like the actual uh, local index of the chunk itself. And there's like these at least three or four different conversion functions. And it's like, well, do both classes use the same functions? What's it's like? it's a mess it's a mess and i have to clean it up and i have to figure out there's an easier way to do this because i have this trend of like convoluting my code like doesn't like this programming games or whatever i don't know what it's just ridiculous it sounds like you kind of ran into a situation where you have a lot of technical debt <laughs> is the the term i hear thrown around for like you did it one way and it worked but it may not have been the way that needs to work for everything that you need to do with that down the road. And when you just program the other features, I do that all the time. I did that with my, my inventory system, right? I was too short sighted with it to, to say, Oh, I need to display this in an inventory screen and I need to access this in an efficient and easy manner. So when I want to do that, then I had to go back and figure out basically a connector method that goes from crazy way I'm storing it and an easy way to make a GUI. Yeah. The reason why I have this weird setup that I kind of explained was like, I'm trying to preemptively prepare for uh, file saving because yeah. in, of course, like um, when you're doing that, you need to make sure that the class, or this is what I was told, you're supposed to make sure that the, that all the data that you're saving to file is in like uh, something that's not a mono behavior. And so that's why I had it this way. But there's like, um, a lot of, it's just, I think I just need to simplify my code because there's like functions that I think there's, there's two of the same function in like these two classes that I had. And I have to figure out like where, what am I, uh, what am I doing here? It's like, <laughs> so. See, so I can push it that way. I can push it that way or no? I can't. Okay, so I didn't edit that one. That makes sense. So if I go to that scene with that one. You lock this. Dungeon Desert Save Sure. And on that. Pushable. What? Doesn't have the script on it. I added. Oh my gosh. Whatever. Should limit. There we go. Is it? I, I want to ask you this. Is it loud when I do this? Yeah. <laughs> it is. I figured because that's my microphone's on the same desk as like like I have two desks and so. It's on a different desk than what my keyboard's on, so that's good. But this is where I do my homework, the desk where it's really loud, so I have to mute myself. Gotcha. And it was partially loud because I had you turned up so I could hear you from the other night, but you're louder today, so I can turn you back on. Oh, okay. All right, all right.
Yeah, I was all excited about yesterday. I thought I was going to be able to stream, and then I get the phone call. <laughs> Needing tech Tech, 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 tech. Can you help us with our phones? It was a computer. It was out of space. It had zero bytes free on the C drive. Which is never good, right? I mean, yeah. you get that low, you're in trouble. <laughs> Danger zone. Gotta oh. move stuff to a... Uh... Delete stuff or move stuff to a flash drive. Right, and they couldn't even get in and run like disk cleanup. It would just fail to run. Right, it would just sit there and just spin forever. Oh. Uh, yeah. So it was a challenge to work around that. Now, why is this one stopped? So you were actually like. Because I might have mis in misinterpreted like that message that you posted on our Discord, but mm -hmm. so is this for like a like a client type thing, or was this like a, you said a relative? I thought. Yeah, it's my parents. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Because okay. you said you did IT, didn't you, or was that someone mm -hmm. else? Oh no, I do IT, just not okay. usually that. Yeah. So I can't move that one, but this one's no longer movable. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. What? How is its start position different? Maybe the mob pushed it? Okay, so that one exactly moved one. That one's at 17.5, and this is the one that's got a delta on it, so it should be able to move in the X direction. But I can't barely touch it in the X direction. Oh, there we go. Okay. What? Oh. Oh! Did I set it on the prefab to not move all of them? Because I thought I didn't. I must have. Let's go into the prefab. Yep, I did. Okay, that's what's wrong. So I want it by default to be movable. Ah. And then I want to override it on the specific blocks that I don't want to be able to move. So I'm going to set this left one to only be able to move in one given direction. Okay, let's try this again. I probably should make it so that enemies can't collide with those. Although then they will be able to walk right through them. Never mind. Yeah, you gotta do like a, a movement filter. Like only, it'll only move if uh, it's a player. player. I'm thinking maybe, here's what I'm thinking. By default, make it so that all movement is like limited, it's frozen, but then when the player touches it, then it like unchecks it in whatever that, you know, like if you're pushing the, the sides of it, then it unlocks, it unchecks the freezing of the X cord. That's probably a good way to do it. Because the block's not going to move any other way, if you think about it. Unless you push it, that's the only way it's going to move. Yeah, and in fact, this one over here, I shot the enemy, and that gave him knockback, and it pushed him into the block and moved the block. Yeah. Which, that's not a good thing. So this one, I should be able to move this way, yeah. Okay, so the functionality I created is correct. Now I need to sort out how I'm going to deal with the enemies. I was thinking initially I could just turn off the collision layer, but that's not right either. Yeah, because then it's just going to walk through it. Those things are... Oh yeah, you made them dynamic. I was about to ask. Yeah. I did set this to dynamic as well, right? Yeah. <sighs> I was just curious because I... Uh... Like I, I know what the difference between dynamic and the dyna the dynamic and the kin kinematic is, but like, I'm I'm still like with my own player. I'm like thinking, you know, should the player be in my game? Should the player be uh, kinematic because you're controlling its movement? And I thought like from videos that I've watched, you're supposed to yeah have it be kinematic if it's the player. It depends. So it depends on how your player controller works. So how are you going to move your player 
character, game objects, in the game through your code. When they hit one of the WASD keys, are you adding a force to the rigid body? Or are you going to directly manipulate the transform of the game object? Oh, okay. Because, well, I want it to, I want it to have it so that, like, um, like right now, it just moves. Like when you hit the button, it automatically changes its velocity. But I wanted to have it so that there's a bit of like, uh, of like a, a, a speed up essentially. Like you said, like applying a force where like, but it would like when you hit the W key, it would be very very quick. Yep. Of like a speed up to to the the, the target speed, and then when you release W, there'll be a bit of a slowdown. So it's not like a sudden jolt, you know, forward. So I'm assuming I would need dynamic in that case, because it's like you said, applying a force. Yes, so if you apply a force, you want dynamic. If you directly manipulate the transform of the game object, then you don't want dynamic turned on. You want to be commit kinematic, which means that I'm I'm controlling where this rigid body goes. Um, okay. Now, what you just said, I'm going to give you a tip on how I liked it once I get my player controller script up. Okay, here it comes. All right. So... The way I'm moving my character, uh, if I can find the axis. So I'm getting the horizontal axis, you know, the horizontal velocity, and then setting the speed there. But on the rigid body, I'm applying its velocity as well, just like you said. So I'm taking the horizontal velocity, which goes from 0 to 1. Because if you've got an Xbox controller, you can just barely push it off to the right, and it'd be somewhere in between that, right? Yeah. Um... If it's a keyboard, it goes from 0 to 1, and it will, over a couple frames, ramp up. And then the same is true when you let go of it. But I've found that it's more responsive with my code because of the way I've set it up with my multi-direction guy. That it's better to turn that off, the ramping down. And I did that in the input project settings. Here in the input on the horizontal and vertical axis. Uh, where is it? Sensitivity. Gravity. So gravity was set to like 0.1 or 1 or something like that. So I set it to 100. And basically that's how fast when you let go of your Xbox control stick or your WASD keys that it goes from 1 back to 0. And with this change, it basically on the frame you let go, it goes back to 0. Okay. So before it would take like two or three frames and that was screwing with my code because basically I'm looking to see is your motion in the horizontal axis zeroed out before you can change direction to go down, right? Because of the way my character works and the facing direction of the character. Um, so that's just how I did it because of the way I set my code up. Like you have to stop in one direction before you can go the other. Because when I play the scene and I walk in a diagonal direction, so I hold W and A at the same time, Get it on the screen here. He keeps facing the direction he was traveling first, even though he's going in both. So if I let go of the W, he starts going up, and then I hold left. He keeps facing up and then walking to the side as well. Yeah. So that was just a, a choice I made with how his animations should play. So yeah. yeah. So um, what was it? The um, input dot get because there's two different versions. Hmm? There was the input dot, the one where you say it works with the gravity. That's the um. So I'm getting the, the axis. One. Input dot get axes. I'm using the one. Here's I tried like, maybe you just told me something really important. I think just there because I tried using input dot get axes in my thing and it would I forget what it did, but it did something weird, and um that's probably what it was and I just didn't realize it because now I'm using get axes raw, which just says like okay when you press a certain key it goes like basically the axis goes from zero to one or negative one or whatever where this yeah. one it smooths it maybe that's and the gravity is what i need to change probably yeah and th there's another setting that goes for the acceleration too i think if i remember okay. right so you can do both sides of it um so edit project settings input where is it is it the dead zone no maybe i'm wrong yeah dead zones for joysticks Right. Speed to move towards target value for digital devices in units per second. That doesn't sound like it either. Hmm. I was thinking there was another one, but maybe there's not. I 
probably just gravity. Yeah. The speed in units per second that the output device falls towards neutral, so towards zero, when the device is at rest. So sensitivity might be in there, because this is the opposite. The speed it moves towards the value for digital devices in units per second. Yeah. So they're both in units per second, so that's probably the other one, the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. But a lot of, like I was saying, so I'm checking specifically for horizontal axis being zero, or greater than zero, and things like that. So it's just the way I set it up, that he can't change directions unless he stops moving in the one direction first. Then he can physically look like he's changing directions, even, even though he's physically moving in both directions the whole time. And you're using the apply force there? I just... Uh, it's the velocity in this case. I tried to oh, add force originally. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I think I took it out when I started adding knockback because I needed to control the knockback scaling and degrading the knockback over time, which okay. I was doing with this scale. So basically in my attack event, it applies the knockback variable, which is just a vector 2, to give you the direction you should go. And then I just scale that by a, a constant. You know, eighty percent each time, so it's less and less each frame. Okay. Maybe I should multiply it by time dot delta time too. So if you have a high frame rate, it doesn't ex oh, decelerate yeah. quite as fast. Code review. Gosh, that's going to change how it feels. Because on my system, I think I get like. Hundreds of frames a second? Yeah, I've got 300 frames a second. Oh. Hit me. Hit me. There's no knockback now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Back has to be stronger. Yeah, I'm going to have to change the knockback value. Which, it's going to be set in another class, so I need to do like a... All hierarchy. I mean, no search results found. Okay. Come on. Okay, it's in health, I think. So that's from take damage, and take damage is called wear. Arky. I've really got two knockback types. One for bow. And one for sword, okay. And those are both in my reference class, awesome. Multiply them by a whole magnitude. See what happens. It's probably gonna go skyrocketing. Hit me, bro. Okay, that's clearly not working like I thought it would. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to my player controller, and for right at the moment, let's just leave that with. Um, not multiplying my time dot delta time. It's doing something funny. Right. I would need to take it in a different direction, basically. I want it to be 80% of it over a certain number of frames. Not 80% times a fraction of time that it took to do one frame. Yeah, I gotta figure out another way to do that. Okay, to do. Oh, that's probably a better way to do it. 
Let's just do it and fix update. Oop, done. <laughs> no need to worry about it now. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, fixed updates for physics, so. Yeah. It, it runs a certain number of times per second. Still gonna be different than how I had it though because yeah it's yeah but I don't know that was gonna happen how yeah it's pretty extreme okay so I could do it by seventy percent then just reduce it faster worst part of this is I'm gonna have to do this to my entity too my monster because he's got knockback too from from me hitting him this is just a one directional thing right now you're missing dude quite a bit you want to come down here and try and shoot me you're stuck on the house aren't you oh, you fire it and all. come on I can't hit him so if I sneak up behind him there we go the wrong way with it so like I'm used to integrated development environments where you can do what I just did there you change the code while you're running it applies at runtime unity does that but something's happening in this guy's code when it happens and he doesn't work anymore <laughs> so I have to restart the game which okay fine but I'm used to things that don't do that like in Java, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay, six. Hmm. So you did this. You did debug.draw, right? In your... Um... With the little raycasts? Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm doing. You're just doing a line though, right? You're not doing a box? Just a line. I mean, I, I considered eventually that the actual, like, the, the ray cast, because there's like the, the box ray cast, I guess. And yeah. we considered, well, yeah, we, yeah, we considered doing that. Once, once Mike heard that you could do that, he was like, Andrew, you gotta do this. Well, not like, yeah, so, so that's something when I get to that. When that, when it becomes important, to do that I will yeah. do that. Use box, use a box raycast instead for like the sword swipes. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm doing. And I wanted to start using the debug draw, but for some reason my brain wasn't handling the fact that the box raycast doesn't take like a corner of the box; it takes the center point of the box and then a size of the box. Right. And my brain can't figure out if I go from the if the center's here and it's size three even right, where that point should be to do the draw. So right now I'm just drawing down the center point, which works, but I would like to see the actual size of the box that I'm casting. And there's no good way of just turning it on, short of well, having enough sleep to do that math that I'm talking about. <laughs> you're talking so you're talking about like the when you're doing the rake casting. Yeah, yeah. So I've got if I go out of this. And go over here in the scene so you can see both. Gosh, it's small. I thought I remember looking to see if there was a... Oh, I know there's the line. Uh, oh, gizmos. Gizmos.drawcube. So, what the frick? So I guess there's this other... Another function event called on draw gizmo selected. Wait, why? Yeah. But that's how you... No, well, that's a cube. Hold on a second. Center size, okay. I mean, a um, cube should work, right? Unity yeah. 2D is still actually 3D. Yeah, yeah. I would just... If it's a true cube, though, and it just takes a center point and a size, that would work. Draw frustum, icon, line, mesh, ray, sphere. That's a wire kit, I guess. So the draw gizmo thing you're talking about is like this bounding box around here. It happens when that object is selected in Unity. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. So, so you wouldn't can't rotate it. As it only the arguments sure. are center and size, and it's not what overloaded. I'm thinking is there has to be something. There has to be something where you can like, uh, um, let's see, what? Wait, draw a wire cube. That's this just the same thing. Just something. Yeah. Uh, draw a wire mesh. And the problem with doing it on Gizmo Draw is it'll always be drawing it, even if I'm right. not trying to fire that box cast. Which look. it would be okay, but yeah. I just didn't know if you had already figured that one out. Sounds like you you're at the same point I am. You're drawing the ray, <laughs> which is easy. Yeah, it just like. So it, there's a the debug uh, class which mm -hmm. has which has a bunch of static methods and there's draw line draw ray so those are specifically for when you're drawing like ray casts they're kind of designed to visualize that but the only problem is uh, there's probably and there probably is a way to do it but there would be like some sort of um, way to to draw a box. You're, so you, let me see. You're using the. Uh, so I'm using just draw line, right? And I know if I draw four lines with the right coordinates, I can get it. But my brain, when four hours sleep last night, I was not going to yeah. figure out what those points were, because it, it's a, geometry. a center point of a box and a size. I know, like, if I go so much in the x direction from yeah. that, that'll be one point, right? And I can do the plus of that in the X direction, and that would be the other point. But I ended up with, like, a parallelogram. When I did it the first time, I'm like, oh, man, I don't really want to do this. So I just went back to the line down the center point to get me started. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, what you can also do is, um, instead of draw trying to draw a box, but you just literally draw a line that's the width of the box, and then you draw another line that's the length of the box that's like perpendicular and so you kind of get a visual like what the box would look like that's what i was gonna do actually <laughs> when i when i got frustrated with it i was like i'll just draw the center point line and then do a line parallel to that yep that's um the width right and that'll tell I, I can visualize the rest of it from there so that's the direction so that's that's the actual line then. So if I do it like this. Cause I've got also like, part of my problem is with my characters being four directionals, right? And they're different in the side directions and then the down directions on their animations. Like to visually make his sword swipe line up, I needed to change the distance that the ray starts from. Mm -hmm. Or the box cast starts from. And I figured out how to do it. It's just a pain. Yeah. It's not consistent. So like if I get a distance set for one of them, then I have to figure it out for the next one. And the next one. And the next and the next day. The next day. So that's basically what's happening right now. So he's taking and drawing just like that. So anything that's in that area he would attack. But I don't know the width yet. And the sides are so short. So from a quick little search here, it seems like the best thing you have is this, well, hold on. Gizmos, it's a gizmo thing. Um, and you can make those things like, that you might even prefer that. I don't know, uh, but there's something called gizmos.drawgui-texture, and basically uh, you can provide an, a, a rect data type, and you'd have to apply a texture as well, but that could just be like a, a blank texture, a blank white texture. Um, yeah, so you would have to do on draw gizmo select. Or at least, select. I think, yeah, on draw gizmos, I think will work. Um, selected would probably be just that I have it selected in the thing, which... Might be good for performance reasons yeah, in the editor. Yeah. So you're saying gizmos dot draw. GUI text. Okay. There is wire cube, like you said. Sphere. Draw cube. That's no. Well, that's gonna do like 
the bound like a bounding box. Like it's gonna do position and size, but no rotation. Whereas the and I'm okay with that because my box doesn't have any rotation on it, as oh. far as because my character is either facing left or right or up or down, so I just shifted the starting point and the size is the same in every direction for right now. Oh, okay. Now but that might be a problem for me drawing the size properly because the size might be different in one orientation versus the other. Yeah. Right now that's the same because I was coding quick. Now I'm trying to code it right. <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. Draw cube. Let's see if that works. Um, but I need oh, to cool. save the center and the size. Okay. There's, oh, so they actually have a low, low level graphics library. Use this class to manipulate active transformation matrices. Issue rendering commands similar to OpenGL. Issue rendering commands similar to OpenGLs. Wow, uh, that actually might be useful. Because I was reading, and apparently the way Minecraft renders uh, the, the, the level is that each chunk is like if you imagine like the chunk is uh, 16 by 16 but then it's like 256 tall so what they mm -hmm. do is they take that chunk and they turn it into a bunch of cubes so they mm -hmm. slice it so each it's like a sub chunk almost so it's a 16 by 16 by 16 mm -hmm. area and there's this thing in in, in open gl called um what, what would they say it was um it was something it had a weird name to it Um, let's see. It was like a list of some sort, but it's kind of, it, 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 it was, from what I've read, it was kind of like a batch type thing. Yeah. There's, and, yeah. you can give it a list of triangles and it'll draw the, basically a, like a fan of those triangles. Is that what you're talking about? I think so. And it does it for it does this once for each each um each like chunk each 16 cube chunk so it does it like a couple times for each whole chunk the whole thing mm -hmm. but because it kind of does that um that batched processing from like in OpenGL it like improves the the rendering if that's yeah. something I could utilize, then that would help me with like um, what oh. I'm doing. Okay, uh, so you want to translate that into Unity? Because it's, it's, I get what you're going for. I know exactly what you're talking for. So I actually had to go down to the very lowest level and I could to draw my um, machines into my mod. <laughs> And you're talking about basically, you would start drawing, you'd basically list out all the uh, vertices and all the colors associated with them and all that. And then basically you just say draw at the end of it. And that batches that whole thing out and it actually draws the whole thing all at once in one pass. To do that same type of batching in Unity, it's built in yeah. and you want to do GPU instancing, which I don't know if it applies to 2D, but it definitely applies to 3D. If you tell it on the renderer, so the material itself, um, let's see, probably doesn't apply to the sprite render. Um, where's my material at? Right here. Enable GPU instancing on the standard shader. Let's see if we've got one for a sprite render though. I don't believe they have that same option for sprite renders. Display list, that's what it's called. Display list. Minecraft's renderer engine uses OpenGL's display list feature to divide a world chunk into 16 cube blocks large. Display lists to speed up rendering significantly. They need to be rebuilt each time when a block within them is changed and can be rendered multiple times to achieve transparency. This is where I, that's where I originally read it from on the Minecraft week. Gotcha. So you're talking about the blocks. I was talking about entities, but it still kind of applies the same. It's just they're batching out the geometry with yeah. the blocks. It should work because I mean, it, it's, too, it's all it is is 2D geometry. So, and 
the reason why I was wanting to do this is because even though like Unity's uh, the Tom app system does have that uh, like that kind of system already implemented, but the problem is, um, and this might not solve it, but the problem is like with the the Z ordering of the player. Like right now, like I have to be in individual mode, which to, to make it so that when the player is like, um, so the player can be either in front of a block if he's under it, or if he's behind it if he's above it, basically, you know, like with the whole, um, yeah, I think you know what I mean. And so yeah. the thing is, is that if it's an individual mode, that works, but then the frame rates are a lot worse because it doesn't take advantage of that batched processing. And so my thought was like, oh, well, I have chunks. Why don't I do like some sort of batched chunk based processing type thing and uh, mm -hmm. use that so that I can I can I can leave the tile mapping on individual and hopefully hopefully unless there's some oversight uh, be able to use the the sorting the automatic sorting that Unity has where you change like oh when you're uh, you're the, the 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 rendering order is based off of the, your your Z value yeah. So, if you if you're batching them into one big draw, basically, oh, then they would all share the same z-axis to begin with, I though, right? I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Because that's what I was trying to do for some of my stuff with sort fixing my sort order. Yeah. And they needed to be separate to let it to draw correctly because of that. Now, yeah. what I'm talking about here, I don't know how it handles with the z order. But this is the GPU instancing that I was talking about. It's a newer feature, probably somewhere in 2018, maybe 2017 version of Unity, they added this. And they have demos out there where they're showing a scene with it and without it turned on. And they'll have like, uh, I don't know, a thousand sprites on the screen and it's okay performance. And then they'll have like 10,000 sprites on the screen and it's still good performance using this method. Yeah. So it's it's as simple as turning it on, but I don't know what limitations it have it has when you turn it on. In fact, let's bring up the mm -hmm. that's not even in there really because it's for the shader specifically. Um, it's one of the advanced. Hey, Royal Potatoes. How's it going? GPU. Hello, ML Dilemma. Everybody's coming all at once. Jeez. What in? It's not even listed in here. How nice. GPU instance. GPU instancing. Uh, use the GPU instancing to draw or render multiple copies of the same mesh, which in our case would be a um, sprite instead, at once, using a small number of draw calls. It's useful for drawing objects such as buildings, trees, grass, or other things that appear repeatedly in a scene. So it might be worth checking it out and seeing... It's, it's literally just changing your shader that's set up or to a different material. And so then checking like, that box, right? And then applying yeah. it to all your sprite renders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to, because I'm pretty sure like sprites use their own shader, so I'd have to take the the you default, did. the original one, and like copy it and like change. It. Right, or just create your new one because they're super simple. The sprite renders oh. are, are oh, okay. dumb. <laughs> the sprite renders don't do anything really. There's and nothing so to them. This is this is all the settings for them. Yeah. Oh, really? Huh. I thought so. Well, anyway. Um, so I create a new material, and you just choose it from the menu. Sprites, default. This is it. This is the shader it uses. Yeah. And then you can set or whatever. Oh, you've been lurking, huh? Let's see how I it don't is. Lurk. I just launch right into the fucking voice <laughs> chat. <laughs> Only. Why does it not like this? Plus operator cannot apply to open a float, float, and vector two. 
Oh, okay. Because I got that off of there last time. So this should do it in theory. Let's see. Um, and let's get rid of that material before I forget. And I'm good. Got yet another material that I don't know what it's hooked up to. I love how Unity, like, when you're in the inspector, you can hover over it and hit F, and it tells you where um, that sprite is located in your project. But they need the opposite, too, where you, you say, Hey, thanks for the follow. Shoker? Um, they need the opposite, where you, you hover on something in your project, and it tells you all the places in this scene it's used, or something like that. I'm so you pretty can sure see. there is, right? If you right click on it, it should say show reference. What? Find reference. <gasps> there you go. That is amazing. And I've never used that, but I just see it and I'm like, when am I going to need this? And I'm like, oh. You're going to need it in a stream with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so really cool. Okay, so that means I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it on one that's actually set up, right? So where is it? Um, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna forget about that feature in two months, and then, and then, and then in another four months I'll remember it because that's how my memory works. Apparently, it works. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sure. Look at that. Oh okay. yes, yes. <laughs> I learned something new in Unity today. <laughs> the stream was worth it. Now, if I could only do it across scenes, right? So you could see if I delete this, this is going to cause me problems. Because that's that's the use case I have for it, right? Like, I've got this extra material. I don't remember where I put it. Can I get rid of it? There's these weird things from what I've observed. I don't know how to do this, but like there is special commands that you can. Um, that little like what? Where is it anyway? I'm, oh yeah, in the hierarchy, there's that little search box thing. And if you type in special commands, it'll like search, and that's how it works. Where like, when you do the find references, if you notice it like, I'm pretty sure it does this. It'll automatically put in like a little code thing that says search for yeah. all things that have this material or that have all, that have this script and that's. Yeah, so if you use this, it's, it's the same type of thing and it sets that code in there. So type yeah. physics material. But did you know, where is it? Oh, I just seen it in the tips the other day. Crap. Uh -oh. Um, is it there? Oh, come on. Yeah, but there's some sort of filter. There's some sort of filtering command. I don't know if it's similar to what you just showed me, but you can do like that in the hierarchy search bar. Just... Asset store, that's it. So the way it was showed the other day was a little different, probably because they had a different view. But you can just say, I don't know, uh, oh. tile set, and then click on asset store, and it searches the asset store from here oh, instead wow. of having to open the asset store. Because the asset store is kind of slow to go through, right? This is like, wait, wait a minute. This is kind of like, uh, I mean, I wasn't around for this, but this was this is kind of like Gary's mod when they had the toy box thing, right? I never played with Gary's mod either. <laughs> oh, well, they had apparently, like, I never did it because I, I kind of played Gary's mod later on, but, like, they had this thing, I guess, called Toy Box or whatever, and, like, basically, instead of mods, I mean, there were mods, but, like, all you would do is that in the game, you would open up this menu, and people would upload stuff, and it could be, like, a, a portal gravity gun. And yeah. all you don't have to, like install or subscribe to the mod all you do is you just click on it and it automatically gets spawned into your game or something so it's like hmm. like you said instead of having to go to a store and add it to your thing or whatever all you do is you just say i want this and it automatically gets dragged into your thing that's cool kind of, uh, you'd get it a little better if you knew uh if you've played gary's mod before in the past you, you know, well like instead of having to go out and go into the steam works workshop or something you're saying it would just automatically occur into the yeah. the game yeah, from the before game before they had the workshop before they had the workshop it would be like all in game so there's no subscribe clicking at it i think this is working because the line that i'm drawing from center point out to the distance or the size yeah. 
is showing correctly. But it's showing it as a texture, basically, or as cube. Never played Gary's Mon. I missed out on stuff, I guess. Now the question is, is the cast start... So like, this is just a visualization of what we think it's doing. It's not actually what it's doing. That's the problem I'm having in my brain. What happens if the collider that is out there is on this side of the center point of that box, but it's still in this box? Does it still collide? I don't know. So, um, are you sure the length of that when you're when you're drawing that red line that that's that length is the same length as the actual ray cast? Not 100 percent sure. Not sure of a whole lot of anything right now <laughs> on well, that's this. One thing I had to make sure of, like um, when I was doing my thing, like what I have is like I have a reach distance variable that I use, um, and so I just use that. And I when I do the the, the debug draw, it asks for like, uh, or I think it's optional, but you can add in a uh, a a draw distance, I believe. And the same thing goes for when you're doing. Um, the actual rate cast itself there's like a, a a max distance because a an air quote an, <clears throat> an air quote ray cast could could theoretically go for infinity that's why it's called a ray but you want it to be limited so it's not a ray anymore it's a line segment but it's still called a ray cast yeah <laughs> so let's try this i'm gonna get that box just past his feet and it doesn't hit him that hit him. I think the box is actually accurate. I need another one of him. Uh, let's see, can I just drag one into the scene? I probably can, can I? Oh, that's cool. He start. he's... I never noticed that before. He's immediately trying to go for me, even though I'm moving him around in the scene still. I haven't dropped him. He instantly started trying to attack. Oh, where is he? Um, disable his path script so he doesn't walk before he kills me. There you go. Oh, he will try and kill me if I get in front of him, though. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I clicked the button, but I wasn't muting. I didn't mute myself. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm doing my homework now, but I'm still okay. listening. But I'm gonna mute my microphone. Okay. So. Yeah, definitely don't let me keep you from important things. <laughs> hmm. What's my what's my raycast looking at? The layers, uh, layer mask. Oh, it's going to be the layer mask on the object. So I need to look at my player in each different direction. Thank you. I will not take credit for it, though. It's purchased off the asset store. For now, at least. <laughs> Some people have been very positive of it and some people have been um less positive of it because it's just because it's from the asset store and i understand their reasoning behind it yes i know <laughs> i know i'm in the room with the person one of the people is that what you're gonna say hello oh oh i thought um well no <laughs> i was just clearing my throat just because i know you'd laugh that oh. was that person. <laughs> I was that person. Okay. I I don't have anything against the the sprites. It's just, um, I forget what. Why was I? Why why were we talking about this the other day? I think because, like, um, why? There. <laughs> When you upload to this, like, yeah. I guess it's just because, like, when you, if, because you said you want to eventually upload it to the, uh, the, the Steam, 
That's... Why am I looking for another word? When you're when you're gonna upload it to the Steam, just put it at that. Um, my fear, my fear for you was that like people would look at it and be like, "Oh, this was just this was like one of those types of games where it's like they just use Unity assets and then people don't get interested in it." And hey. but there's nothing like I mean, if you put a lot of effort into it, people will enjoy it, um, and I think it would get a lot of copies, a lot of sells, but. But what I was saying, like, because it has, when you look at it, the sprites, they kind of have that, that feel to them. You look at them, like, they, they just look like free assets almost. And I, would, we were, I was suggesting that, you know, it's like, t they seemed like placeholders. That's what I was trying to say the other day, is they look like placeholder type things. And eventually you'd, you know, invest a little bit of money and get someone to actually make some sprites. And then you can replace them. But if you want, like, and then and then you said that you were going to just upload it as is and see what you get from it, I think you said. Well, it depends. It, it really depends. So it, if, if I'm super excited about it, yeah. as in I think this is something that could sell, I, I'm more likely to invest my own money in paying an artist, right, than... I'm not sure about this. It's kind of sketchy as it is. Do I want to spend a lot more money on it, right? Or do I just release it as is and say I had a fun building it, basically, right? Yeah. I definitely think it's like totally possible. It's totally possible that you could like, with what you have, the the artwork that you have there, that it could be like, people would look at it initially and be like, what the, and then they'll play it. And if it's really, if it plays out like really well, they'll their minds will be blown but it has to play very well and that's where i'm at with it right yeah. so if it doesn't play well there's no point in me even getting additional assets for it right because nobody's gonna be blown yeah. away for it by it that that's the whole thing so it's almost like catch 22 it's either going to be stupendous or not at all <laughs> it'll shake the end it'll yeah shake the end. i will i will be the person yeah, you, that's what you gotta put. You gotta put yourself in that kind of mindset because it's like, like, if you look at Steam, you get all these other games that like they're either they look like the 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 artwork was created like super quickly or they're free asset type things, but then the gameplay is like it looks like it was made in like a month and then something or yes. something like that like it was like low 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 budget in fact it wasn't even low budget it was just low no shits given type thing and like and then they see your game and they think the same thing but then they play it and it's like this plays like a like a game like a actual game and it completely <laughs> changes everyone's perspective of, yeah and that's how that's how you do it Yeah, it's a super common reaction. I feel you makes it worth investing in yourself and others will probably invest as well. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So like if I don't think it's a good game, I may not spend the money on getting art, which is going to lower the standard even more of what it's going to be, which is a scary place to be in. Right. I'm about yeah. to put my first placeholder asset in the game and it's scary. <laughs> well, you got to the it's the artwork is the hard part like getting getting a mic is is like people have said before it's not easy to find a mic so using placeholders is good because you want to just start making games and learning the right. practices and the and the techniques of like what's a good technique what's a bad technique in like um yeah that's pre that's pretty much good techniques and bad techniques get some experience making games pretty much even if it's even if the art is placeholder and i would say for me personally it was important that even the prototype i'm working on look halfway decent mm -hmm. and the reason for that was i would i've done this many times where i've built prototypes i have never taken one this far right where i've i've basically worked on this for 26 days now straight every single day yeah. and I would have grand ideas of what to make and just trying it out and looking at it and having my ugly art in it that I would just draw like stick man figures right <laughs> that yeah. kind of thing 
I, it just completely demoralized me in wanting to do it. Having this, I'm still wanting to go, so. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense to me. So the health script. I know this probably seems stupid what I'm doing, but I'm doing this because I want a target. I want a dummy target. Target my dummy. Alright. What else do I need? A rigid body, a collider, I guess. Box collider. Box collider is going to be the exact same size as that thing. Yep, looks like it is. And what else? It needs to be on the right attackable layer. Let's go to prefabs, enemies, drag this down here. Be like a practice target kind of thing, right? Overworld. Let's just disable the knight altogether so he doesn't do anything. And let's drag in our enemy we just created, which is a dumb target. Put it right there. Put it on a different order. There we go. Let's duplicate you a couple times. There we go. Let's play it now. Hopefully this doesn't just crash when I hit him, because I don't know what all scripts I'm referencing in my code that might yet be needed on this. Hopefully that's all. Awesome! <laughs> Whoa, what the? What the hell? I know what it is right away. Um, da -da -da, gravity scale zero. Are they still two on top of each other? Oh, okay, yeah, they are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so start the game. Oh, they don't fall anymore. Hey, it moved him. I need to up his angular drag, though, to match what the knight has. Or his linear drag, whatever. Linear drag's one. Okay, what was the night? Well, five, okay. So that just gives him a little bit more uh, staying power so he doesn't just constantly glide away. Knock back. Start. All right, my character's not selected. So the box is not right, right? The the box is in the right position for that center of it, right? But I can hit that when it's beyond the bounds of that box. See? There has to... Now that I think about it, I mean, I don't know. There has to be a way where you can, like, deep... With that... You're... When you do the swing, you're only doing a ray cast, right? You're not doing a box cast? I'm doing a box cast, because I figured it would need to be wider than just a single point. Well, there shouldn't be a way to do that. Like, I feel like not, like I got this rush of, like, sixth sense over me. I'm like, there has to be a way where you can visualize a, right. a ray cast. In, like, a box cast, kind of. Gotta be a way. Like, I don't know if there's something in the gizmos drop down. That's what I was thinking. Oh. But, yeah. If it's there, that's the easy way, right? Yeah. I don't know if there is, though. Like, I just had this feeling that there was. But it seems like... Like, there would be. There's nothing for physics, though, I'm seeing. But... Or... The only other thing I'm actually gonna launch Unity now, so I can look with you. I'm doing my. I'm doing my. Sorry. Own. It's okay. I'm, it's my. It's my fault because I'm. I like helping people. 
I'm with you. That's why I watch you stream and try and chip in where I can. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to also say if there's nothing there, click on the win, uh, the window menu button. And I, I thought that there might, I don't know if there's physics debugger a analysis, physics debugger. I don't know if that does anything. <gasps> What's this? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I've never seen this before. I didn't know this was here. I'm gonna. <laughs> I know, Peter. I've never seen this before. I didn't know this was a thing. See, this is how my brain works. I remember things that I know. I like. I've never used this before, but I've seen it once. And it just sticks in my head, and then, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait a minute, it, this could actually be something. Like this is the time. Like this is when my memory like serves me best in these obscure like random moments. Um, and, and here I thought I knew a lot of things about Unity. Me too. I mean, there's probably a lot of stuff I don't know. It's just I just come across things. I think it's just luck at this point. Um. Triggers, static colliders, stuff like that. Um, I don't know. You said that your the box, the raycast box is is not rotated, right? No. So I've got the angle set to zero right now. Not that I oh, necessarily will keep it. Yes. Okay. 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 Um, collider types show. Because what I was thinking, I don't know if this is probably a stupid idea, but like. You could make it so that um, the the ray cast uh, gets created. This is a weird idea, but the ray cast gets created from a already existing uh, collider. I guess I don't know. So like then you that just already visualize existing. the collider. Yeah, because you can see mm -hmm. the collider, but I'm trying to think. Like what you would do is you'd have a box collider and it might not do anything. Like it might be like completely doesn't collide with anything. But then you have it inside of a, the only problem is you have to have it inside of a game object and you rotate the game object to rotate the box collider. And then what, that's probably convoluted and stupid, but like you do that and then you take, you use the collider to create the actual ray cast. That's probably kind of, you know, like I said, convoluted, but that's what I'm thinking. I get what you're going for, but it's not much different than what I've got with it now showing me the, you know, yeah. we've got the cube being drawn there and the center point of the cube is the center point where we're starting the box cast from. Mm -hmm. But I can't see the rest of the box being projected forward. It's just like the size of the box and that's it. It's not. Unity debug, how can you visualize the box cast? Here, there's a yeah. form thing. Um, so Peter put this in, and I'd seen this one earlier today, but this doesn't make sense to me by itself. Unless it's honest? updating this on Draw Gizmos. On... Okay. A wrecked. A re Wait. A oh, wrecked is a thing. I did all these other things earlier today trying to figure that out. A wrecked is a thing, really. R. Just give me that R dot what? What is bottom center? Can you do new rect? Yeah. What uh, what's the overload with? Position and size. I'm pretty sure. Isn't there a rotation? Oh no, because I'm pretty sure the rect is used for like gooey stuff, so there is no rotation. Um, I mean, I think that's probably okay for me because really with the way I'm going to have him swing the sword is the box just changes its size orientation if it's yeah. taller or wider, right? In the X or Y axis based on his direction. Here's this. I, this is just, I know... I mean, if what you just found works for you, but I there was, I was looking at this page, and it looks like they they already did what you were trying to do the other day. If you scroll down, you'll kind of see. 
they like they already did it for you pretty much. <clears throat> Front, bottom, left. So this is doing it in 3D, probably. I guess, yeah. But it's a similar... Similar. You can adapt it, right? Mm -hmm. Draw box. Yeah, because he's drawing all the... 1, 2, wow. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that'd be 4, plus 3, plus another 3, be 10, then 2 more in the back. Yeah, so he's drawing the whole box. All and edges. Yeah. But again, it's it's not. Yep. I'm not doing the center. It looks like. Like I I know how to draw a box. I want to get it aligned perfectly with the ray cast. That's that's or the box cast. That's that's my drawback because I don't know what the calculation is from that center point that determines how it works. Right. So let me. Paint, Photoshop, something. Here we go. So let's say we've got our character here in this blue blob. Make my thing bigger. So that's our character. And he's yeah. swinging his sword over here, right? When we do the box, let's see if I can get a different thing that'll be box shaped. No, that's not what I want. I want the pencil. Cool. So we do a box cast, right? It's going to be like a square from, say, there, and it's going this direction. So let's grab a different color. It's going to go this direction, right? That, that's my understanding of it so far. But if this box is projected in this direction, and this is the center point, let me get a smaller... Uh, say that's the center point that it's the box is starting from. Yeah. If there's a collider back here, does it hit? I have no idea. Is it only from the center point forward? Well, from from my understanding, like it just seems like I've never used it before, but I would assume that what would happen is, um, like for the box raycast, it would. Well, here's what I think. I don't. Maybe let me look at the function. But what I'm thinking is that you know how like you're in Photoshop right now. But mm -hmm. when, so if you draw a line, you know how you can change the thickness of that line? Yeah. It's kind of like that. The box is just a line that's really short and thick. Yes. And so it's starting from the edge of the box. Got what I'm saying? I, I think I get what you're saying. So you're of the opinion that it's doing this line and anything between those two points on that line segment or like this. You're basically drawing the line like this. Yeah, the the origin location is at the edge, like you just did right there. Because now I'm ass I'm assuming I have to I'm I'm gonna look at the function because there's probably uh, something in the documentation specifying where the origin is. And if that's the case, like it, it kind of makes sense that that's how they would do it, since Doc Fox says half the extents. So sorry, Peter's messages too. Oh, that's fine. In each dimension. Oh, he already looked at the docs. Um, That's where I was going to go next to. <laughs> because I, I get what you're saying. This makes sense and is probably the easiest to calculate. But the fact that it's a size instead of a width makes me wonder if it is going to go back to here as well. And if it goes back to there, does it then extend past the end point by the half width, right? Yeah. Because that will significantly change what my draw needs to be. Basically, I'm going to draw a whole nother box width completely in length to visualize where the thing actually is going to work. And, and that's the important part to me is the distance out here. And is it going to fill in the gap between the player and the point that I'm saying this is the start of the sword? Because I kind of want it to fill backfill that in without going behind the player. Because I don't want it to hit anything over here. So it kind of has to be precise that this box starts kind of like that. If this is my yeah. player. And I know there's delays in that, so that's probably really hard for you to 
keep up with what I'm drawing on the screen when I say this. It's a very small delay. Good. So you want it so that so you want it so that the actual box cast is from the player forward. And yeah, so the center so, so the, it's not going to surround the player. It's only going to be the ed, the center of the player is going to be aligned with the edge of the box. Kind of kind of yeah. Yeah. Cuz when we look at the animation that kind of makes sense. And the other piece is too, like his animation, he swings wide to the one side. Yeah. So I might do another, maybe not a whole box cast, but maybe just like a circle cast or something beside mm -hmm. him to finish out that swipe because it feels weird now, right? Like you yeah. can't hit unless they're directly in front of you and you've only got four directions of travel. So you kind of have to be right in line with it. It just feels funky. And that's why I wanted to visualize it. Once I can visualize it, I can tune it in to be in exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Community, um, uh, maybe just the docks. I want to read it myself here real quick. Physics, two D, box cast. Spell it wrong. I probably spelled it wrong. I feel like there's a lot. It. I'm watching a video here. It seems like there's a lot more to the Gizmos library than it than what it appears. Oh really? More than the eye. Um. Probably want to watch because it seems. Wait a minute. Matrix. That's the Gizmos matrix used by all Gizmos. Maybe you can. Oh. Is it? What's the return? It returns a raycast hit 2D. Fire distance point. So raycast hit 2D does have point on it, by the way. The point in space where it hits. I'm sure you're probably using it already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm using that, the thing. Hey, no worries, Peter. Catch you next time, man. Follow, you'll know when I stream next. <laughs> Shameless plug. But it seems like you could use gizmos. Okay, there it is. Cool. cool. And then what you do is um, there is a matrix property in the gizmos library. And to rotate stuff, you change the matrix somehow. The matrix value. Okay. So you can actually directly manipulate the underlying matrix. That's interesting. Yeah, so you can rotate. Like, you use... It's not a quaternion? <laughs> you use yeah, it's quaternions. This guy's using... he, Because he's doing, like, the box cast, and he's using gizmos to visualize them. And he does gizmos.matrix is equal to matrix 4x4.trs, whatever that is. Tra oh, transform, that's what TRS stands for. And then he puts in a uh, position, the center of a box, and then a rotation, and then uh, a vector three that's just all set to ones. And then he does draw wire cube, and it like kind of, from what the video looks like, he's actually visualizing a box. And so you do have to do that. Like that's kind of how you do it. If you watch that video and you just skip through it, you'll see. I'll have to check it out after the stream. Okay. I, I have used the gizmos before when I was trying to make like a tower defense game. And yeah. basically I made a sphere around it with the gizmo to show its range. It was, it was handy. Which is part of the reason I want to do this because I'm sure it'll be handy once I do it. Yeah. You could probably like you can even make gizmos interactable so you can change properties yes so this is an important wording here this distance of the box ray cast controls how far the origin of the box travels mm -hmm. that's how far the box travels then if you look at the size option it says it defines how large the box is 
the box is fired through the world. The larger the box, the more game objects it'll hit. So by those two definitions, I take it as if the box goes bef like is bigger behind the origin point, it'll still be colliding with it. And how far it travels is just that, and it still collides with things beyond that center point. So I think it's this bigger area is what it's going to interact with. Not just the distance length. So I need to take distance plus the half width, the size, to get the total distance of this thing. And I need to do that in both directions. And both directions up and down. And that should do it. Mm -hmm. So center point. Let's say CP. Minus the half width. And then CP plus half width plus distance should give me the total length or the two points on the length. And then for the Y axis in this case, because we're facing off to the, uh, the West here, it would be center point plus half width and center point minus half width and those are the four points of the box and size is what it's a vector two i believe where is it size of the box it's a vector two Why is it a size? Can it be a rectangular then? By the way, if I get this working, Andrew, I'll share this method with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is what I thought of originally. Um, we need to know the center point, which we're getting, the size, and we're good from those two plus the distance, which we know. And the color we don't care about. The direction we've got. Where's the distance being set at though? Swing distance. <clears throat> You know, that'd be, I don't think I fully understood the genius of what you were describing before, Andrew. And I apologize for that. What, what, was, what did I say? The collider stuff you were talking about. Like you were saying, I think you were trying to say, I thought you were trying to say, create a collider and then you can see the box collider's like bounding box to visualize it, right? But were you saying use the box collider to determine what to hit, what's been hit? Because that would be um, stupid simple then. I this. guess I mean that I, that's not that wasn't a hundred percent what I was saying. Okay, but that actually is also I, I don't know how you would do that, but that would actually be pretty good. Um, so like if we I created several boxes, I could design the box size and shape at runtime or at edit time, right? Yeah, let me 
and then only check the trigger when I'm mid swing. Yeah, let me see. It's a completely I... different path than what we just solved for, but that's another option. Yeah, and, and there's... I don't mean to distract you from your homework again. I'm sorry. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> the so the collider two E. I don't know how this would work. Is because this it seems like it would work, but it's like I don't know. But if you make the collider so that it doesn't affect anything, but then so a trigger essentially. Trigger, yeah. But then what you do is you make it so that uh, you use the um, when you left click when you actually swing the sword, you would uh, use the function get contacts. I believe. Oh, a collider hat. Oh. Collider 2D. And you can do get contacts. Uh, Gosh. It, it may not be a bad method of doing it then, if it's that yeah. simple. And you can visualize it very easily. Okay, that'll be plan B. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Collider. Because if I get too frustrated with trying to fiddly position the stuff, I could add a bunch of trigger colliders real easy. Yeah. To get the exact like in front and down below and beneath his overswing and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so swing distance is what the other piece we need. So we want from so we'll say float far. Gosh, how do I want to do this? Vector two? No. Vector two. Top left. And that's. Float X one. So that'll be the float x right float y top float y bottom. Okay, so the left is going to be I'll grab this image on the other screen that just looks like crap, but it makes it makes sense to me. Center the hunt X plus the size dot X would be our leftmost point. And then our right no wait. That'd be our rightmost point. And that should be minus. And then this one's going to be this plus the distance. Swing distance. Okay. That gets those two. And then the top is going to be center point plus. Size dot. Y. And those sizes might need to be divided by two, I don't know. Because I think the size, the vector size is probably the whole. And it's actually a half width instead we need. But we'll work with this for now. And then bottom is going to be center.y minus size.y. And I'm fully aware that my bottom and my top might be reversed, but it doesn't really matter because. I just need to get four points, and I just happened to name on that. So the distance is only taken into account once. It's interesting. Yeah, that's how we wrote it out, though. Uh, so now we need to get two. Draw a line. Okay. 
They only work in 3D space, really. Okay, so... One line's gonna be from... Vector... 3... Top line equals new vector three x left y top zero. So then we say right. And then we say top line one to top line two. Line number one. Oops. And we'll do bottom line. Left and right are going to stay the same, but we're going to say bottom. Oops. Um. So that should draw the bottom line. Then we need to just do two more calls of this. And one's going to go from top line one to bottom line. Can get an X if I do that. So top line left. That's the top left corner. We need to go to bottom left corner. And then we need to go from top right to bottom right. That should be it. Okay, so let's play this. See what happens. The button's too small, I can't click it. There we go. See, if it was right, then he would be getting hit right now, that little guy. Maybe he is. Okay. Got hit. There he's not getting hit, but it looks like he's in the line though. Right, I need to orient it based on the direction as well. Because the direction will determine the distance, which axis the distance is applied to, and if it's a plus or a minus on that axis. So this is basically set up so that he's facing to the left. No, because the y co x coordinates go down to the left, so it's like he's facing to the right.
It's still not behaving, right? Oh crap, what time is it? <laughs> okay, so apparently I don't know how to keep track of time. <laughs> and I need to get kids to bed. So let's see who else might be streaming. I also need to get myself to bed because I haven't been sleeping right. Uh, no one I follow is streaming right at the moment. Interesting. Unity. Making a multiplayer game. 3D, 3D development of SVRTO. Night 5, completing the inventory and beginning the creation of a hero set. Let's take a look, make sure they're not AFK or something. They are not. They're actively doing things. Well, that's just... And they have a mic. Let's raid them. Yay. And let's go to this here. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night, guys. I'll catch you tomorrow, probably. My wife's made some plans, so hopefully I can still stream just later on. Bye. Yeah. Let me trigger the raid.